It is not a day for mourning and tears. It is a day of remembrance and fond farewell. Final tribute to the man who led the free world from the threatening doom of slavery to a glorious victory. From the Hall of Kings at Westminster, the simple casket is drawn by 142 sailors to St. Paul's. It is the medieval pageant that is traditionally reserved for royalty, but conferred by a grateful nation on the man to whom it owes its very existence. Services are held at St. Paul's. It was the dome of this cathedral that stood like a towering symbol of hope during the London Holocaust of World War II. President de Gaulle represents France, one of five heads of state present today. In all, 110 nations are represented. There are six sovereigns, including Queen Juliana of the Netherlands. Queen Mother Elizabeth enters amid the silence that seems to shroud London. Princess Margaret and her husband, Lord Snowden. Then the Queen is awaited. He shatters precedent twice. She is greeted by the Lord Mayor of London with the Black Sword of Mourning as she arrives before the Churchill family. Usually, as befits her rank, she arrives at state affairs last. The Queen also becomes the first British monarch to attend the funeral of a commoner. The gun carriage that was first used at Queen Victoria's funeral approaches the church. It will be carried in by eight grenadier guards as Sir Winston's immediate family follows slowly behind. The coffin is brought down the aisle to a catafalque under the great dome. Set in the floor is an inscription dedicated to its architect, Sir Christopher Wren. It might well apply today. If you seek his monument, look around. Everyone present joins in singing a hymn Sir Winston himself had requested, the American Battle Hymn of the Republic. simple service takes but a half hour. Again, it was what he wanted. From here, Sir Winston is to be taken to the pier at the Tower of London for a trip up the Thames to Waterloo Station. the family is to be present during the burial near his birthplace. As the coffin is placed once more on the gun carriage, the royal family stands in farewell on the steps of the cathedral. With them are kings and queens, prime ministers and presidents, dukes and princesses. As the launch moves up the river, there comes a last salute from the Tower of London. It was Sir Winston's desire that the waterborne cortege pass close to the waterfront area that took such a wartime pounding. 
As he passes, the giant cranes dip in salute. The launch moves to Festival Pier, where Sir Winston will be taken aboard a train for the journey to Bladen. Waves of RAF jets give the final farewell. So, Winston Churchill returns home to rest beside his father and his American mother. The legend he created will live on, not only in our time, but in the far horizons of the future. The mists of history will never dim the shining image of Winston Churchill.